Today on 10 Minute IT Jams, we have Yuvraj Pradhan, who is the head of pre sales for APAC for SonicWall. This is our eighth IT Jam with SonicWall. And if you watched our previous uh, IT Jams with them, you'll know it's a cyber global cybersecurity company specializing in firewall, network security, cloud security, and more. Um, so today we'll be talking about zero trust security. But before we begin, welcome to the Jam, Yuvraj. Thanks, Nick. It's great to be here. All right. Um, so to begin, just could you give us a brief definition of what you mean by zero trust security and why is it so important this year in 2021? Yeah, so zero trust means different things to different people. But in a nutshell, what zero trust means, it means trust no one and verify always. But traditionally, if you look at zero trust is based on the concept of uh, perimeter security is based on the concept of anything which is outside the perimeter is untrusted and unsafe. Whereas anything which is inside the perimeter is trusted and deemed safe. But over the years, what we've seen is this approach has fallen flat. And time and again, we've seen the breaches happening across the globe. So the trust model is broken. So what zero trust does, it questions the premise that the concept of the user, the, the device or the network being trusted has to, which gives implicit trust is not applicable anymore. So the, on a fundamental level, what zero trust does, it, it helps on the basis of assuming that the system will be breached and that we have to design our architecture assuming that the, the, there is no perimeter. Now, there are three key principles of zero trust. Number one, it means that the, we need to provide secure access and authenticate access to all our resources. Second, what we need, need to do is we got to log everything. And the third thing is it has to be based on something called the list privileges. All right, cool. Um, so it has kind of had a surge in the last 12 months. Uh, a lot might have to do with uh, the pandemic that happened last year. Um, so will it become less relevant as people return to on-premise work after um, the pandemic? I don't think so. See, zero trust was there before the pandemic. It's been here for quite a while now. And I think it'll be still be relevant because we'll still have, have users either working from home or uh, working from office. So what I fundamentally see is that most of the enterprise will follow something called a hybrid model where we'll have some users working from home and some users working uh, from the office, right? So zero trust will help provide a strict uh, restrictions on and, uh, and verify whether that particular user is trusted or not, depending uh, irrespective of whether the user is within the network or outside the network. And uh, with the pandemic, so what we've also seen is that the cloud adoption is at a high. So we will see the zero trust being adopted not only on on-prem environment, but also uh, for the cloud environment as well. All right, yeah. And of course, zero trust is um, kind of a evolution of per perimeter-based security. Do you think it will replace perimeter-based security that came before it? So I think what we need to understand that zero trust is not a product or a technology. It is a philosophy or a concept, right? So from a zero trust perspective, it is a framework where the perimeter security will be part of the zero trust architecture. So what we'll see in addition to the perimeter security, we need to look at how do we protect the identity? How do we protect uh, the data? How do we protect the user, the application, and as well as, as the cloud, right? So for an enterprise, so what we will see is we will see a model where the, you, the first thing we, we got to do is understand the protect surface, right? Who are the resources that we need to, which are the resources we need to protect? After we do that, we need to understand the data flow, the uh, application flow, right? Who is talking to whom? And based on that, we got to build an architecture, uh, whether using the existing architecture that we have, or we add additional technologies to help complement uh, what is already existing there. And then finally, we got to enforce and then maintain and monitor. That will help us to provide more secure environments uh, for the workers. Yeah. Um, and what do you think is the future for zero trust security? So how do you see it evolving? 
So I think uh, the future for zero trust, what we'll see is, uh, see, the fundamental principles of zero trust will still there, right? For example, talk, talking about, we talk about secret access, we're talking about these privileges, and also assuming that the trust, the uh, breach will happen. So I think the zero trust will st still remain. If you look at uh, some of the research that we've seen, it's expected by uh, 2026, the zero trust market will reach about $54.6 billion with a year and year growth about 18%. So I'm sure uh, starting from 2021, we will see more and more uh, growth in zero trust, right? And if you look at some of the, some of the areas that uh, we will see a lot of uh, growth is number one, uh, you, you saw about uh, the recent uh, solar wind attacks. So I think supply chain and third party risk is something that a lot of uh, uh, cust customers and, and vendors will look at providing some assurance and security around it. We'll also see uh, enterprise looking at how to secure the IoT and the OT environments. And with a cloud uh, on a high, we'll also see uh, zero trust being implemented on uh, the cloud environments. And with uh, regulations such as GDPR coming in place, data security is some area that we will see a lot of zero trust uh, being applied. Right, yeah. And uh, now talking specifically about your company, how does SonicWall help their customers provide zero, zero trust security? Yeah. I think the first thing uh, we got to do is I think we, do, we have to understand the product service, right? When I mean by product service, we need to understand which is our users, which is our data, which is our endpoints, which is our application, right? So once we are able to do that, so what SonicWall does, it, we have something called a platform approach, which we call the SonicWall boundless liability platform, which helps provide uh, zero trust sec uh, security. So what we do is as we, as we have more and more users working from home, what we are able to do, we are able to number one, look at first thing is the device. How do we protect the device? So our next generation endpoint solution can protect the endpoint, right? Then now, you, now the user needs to access the resources which could be on the, on the cloud or on the network. So using our, our uh, platform, now we are able to provide secure access from the device for the user, whether they're accessing anything on the cloud or on the network. And what we also do is we provide facilities like, you know, uh, uh, things like the device security check. We also do things like uh, multi-factor authentication. Coming from uh, on the on-prem or on the data center, we have something called the uh, application firewalls, which help protect the uh, the network from any inside, uh, inside or out, outside threats, right? We, we, have, we are able to understand uh, where the threat is coming from, who is, who is the threat, which uh, location the, uh, the, the threat is coming from. From a cloud perspective, we also have virtual firewalls to protect the virtual environment. We also do things like micro segmentation. And also, we also have, have solutions such as cloud, cloud application security to provide applications protection for the applications. And to sum it up all, so what we also have is we have the management platform to not only enforce policy, but also pro provide monitoring and logging for all the activity that's happening in our environment. Perfect, sounds good. Well, uh, that concludes today's IT Jam with Sonicwall Head of Pre-Sales for APEC, Yuvraj Pradhan. Thank you for your time today. Thanks, Nick.